Thank you very much, Eric Sterner, and hi to all my viewers in Switzerland. Okay, let's check it out. Keen-eyed viewers will know I actually had this one in a previous mailbag sitting in the, on the side or something, and I never actually got around to opening it. So, we have a note. Don't want to spoil it for myself. Oh dear. Oh no. No, no. We've looked at this before. No. This is got No, we looked at this. <laughs> we look. Oh no, it's slightly different. No, we looked at the USB one. What? It's a mouse. What? It's a 10 watt soldering iron, and it's got a controller that looks like a mouse. What the heck? It's got a Farnell sticker on the back. Um, that's bizarre. Let's check it out. What fresh hell have we entered here? He heated up in heated up in five seconds. Chinglish right off the bat. Uh, Dura Tool mini soldering station made in China. Yes, that looks like a mouse with a temperature wheel on it. Uh, one of those uh, weird ass uh, pommy plugs, and it's sold by Farnell slash Element Fourteen. I still call them Farnells. Good on you. Um, unbelievable. What? I was looking for a new soldering iron for electronics lab and came across this strange device. Who would have ever think to use a mouse as a chassis for a soldering iron? And the fact that they sell it on Farnells is beyond us. Furthermore, please be careful Wolf, because it's not electrically safe. We connected to try it out and it does indeed work. One problem is that between the little button you're supposed to press to start and PE, we can measure 85 volts um, AC. That would be leakage in a filter cap. I would assume I also get some slight films when holding my hand that little knob place. <laughs> Eric, thank you very much, Eric, Peter, and Lars. Let's check it out. The unitary of soldering iron tip and heating element. Okay. Wow. That is actually designed to look like a mouse. Can you believe it? Oh, wow. Whose ridiculous idea was that? And look at that. Just like uh, 500 degrees. There you go. There's a little arrow in there. So 500 anywhere from... <laughs> Low. Don't know what low is, but oh wow. That's obviously some sort of trimmer in there. And you can see the switch mode in there. You can see the isolation tranny. Oh goodness. So that looks and feels exactly like that crappy uh, USB thing that we uh, tried out. And that was, gar oh look at the tip. The humanity. Oh. Oh no, no, please, no. Please don't let this be real, please. Oh. And of course we've got ourselves some little 3.5mm TRS plugs here and that just goes in there like that. Why? Why would it? No, why would anyone buy this? I refuse to give this thing validation, so I'm not going to actually solder with this thing. Let's just take it apart, shall we? Oops, my balls just dropped. Uh... They get, yeah, okay, so that was, yep, that was designed, to, this was the contact, so they use this little ball as the contact, and that spring to hold it in place, oh my god, dry as a dead dingo's donger, oh, dry as a bone, look at that, <laughs> fantastic, anyway, there's naff all in here, um, they've just got the two connections for the heater element, um, which just bugger off down here, and a lead, and that's all she wrote. So obviously our three connections on there, the two uh, heating elements, well, one's ground, one's positive heating element, and the other would be the um, sensor up here, and the LED's just probably across the heater element. Bloody tri-wing screws, are you kidding me? <sighs> Time to get medieval on its ass. Yep, just had to have that inside a mouse case, didn't you? Unbelievable, what was the design pitch meeting for this thing? What a load of rubbish. Anyway, we've got our um, uh, mains uh, switch mode here and secondary, of course. Uh, it's got opto couple of feedback. And there's our primary to secondary filter cap there. And that's maybe what's uh, causing the uh, tingling that was uh, reported, perhaps. It's not necessarily unless they've uh, got real bad clearance under here and it's something else or there's something wrong with the tranny or something like that anyway um yeah uh, mains input over here um they've got a cord clamp here and soldered directly on looks like it is actually fused but uh full wave bridge 
Going into a no-name uh, 400 volt jobby down here. And we've got just another little inductor for some filtering. And he goes into another mains jobby. And I couldn't be bothered uh, caring about what the switch mode controller is here. Um, secondary side, another no-name jobby down there. 1000 mic. So nothing fancy there at all. Uh, just doing primary side regulation. I don't think there's any secondary side regulation there at all. Nope. Um, adequate uh, clearances and things like that, so you know, it's not too shabby. Got a couple of little cutouts in there even, so... And they've got uh, bleed resistors over here. So it's, sure, it's built down to a price, but, um, you know, nothing inherently wrong with that. And then there's our output board, and there's our selection wheel. Jeez, it's not even uh, <laughs> held... On the other side there, that's a bit how you're doing. And, uh, yep, as I suspected, it's just a pot there. Turn that around, and there she goes. That'd just be adjusting the uh, pulse width modulation. That's what this tranny flapping around in the breeze here is. No worries about that, because there's no mass in that. Not that this thing's ever going to uh, vibrate. And then we're just going to have a um, PWM controller, I suspect. Ah! It's a triple five timer for the win. All the triple five timer fanboys go wild. Woo! But it gets better. There's not one, but two triple five timers. There's another one under there. Unbelievable. So I suspect that one of them um, is being used for the uh, touch sensor uh, timer thingo for the auto uh, timeout. And um, the other one is, of course, uh, controlling the uh, pulse width modulation so there you go that's absolutely hilarious it's just a uh, primary side uh, dc cheap ass dc uh, converter and then a triple five timer drive and a tranny to <laughs> pulse width modulate this thing ah oh, fantastic come on i mean really oh but yeah how much does this thing cost really built down to a price ah oh. I mean, just no, 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 no. For the price of one of these, perhaps even less, considering that you're buying it uh, from Farnells, you could get one of those rip-off Heiko 926 stations and just put some real Heiko tips on there. And, like, that's going to be, like, a fine, proper temperature-controlled soldering station. Uh, for, like, I've done a video on that, like, under 20 bucks. It's just, ah, oh, why would you buy this little piddly 10 watt turd with these dicky little tips? I don't get it. I'm, I'm not even going to waste my time powering this damn thing up. Ah, oh, anyway, thanks for setting that in. That's hilarious. Oh, oh, I didn't see this. Hang on. It's the magic soldering pen. Ah, <laughs> uh, wow, the specs. I mean, <laughs> come on. Anyway, if you leave it unused for 15 seconds, it's got to power back up. That's that triple five uh, timer in action over here. <laughs> so just don't, just don't buy these stupid little cheap soldering irons. If you want cheap, fine. There are uh, cheap, uh, proper soldering station solutions like the Heiko 936 ripoff and, and whatever. Like, there's just... Uh, I mean, I... Kind of saw a niche use for the previous like USB powered five volt version of this, which is an app, which was an absolutely identical uh, thing, like physically identical pen. But this one with its mains controller, it's it's just stupid. All right. As for the insulation resistance here, I thought we'd just get out the mega here and we'd uh, test it at various uh, voltages. What I've got is I'm going to go between test between the grounded output uh, terminal and both of the uh, mains input uh, terminals. So, yeah, let's give that a burl. We've got our test. I've only got it on 50 volts at the moment. But there you go. 11 gig, 10 gig. That's good. Let's ramp it up. Let's go to 250. 6 gig, go all the way to a 1,000 volts, shall we? There we go, 7 gig, that's still good. And there you go, that's between uh, active and the output ground. So, you know, 11, 12 gig climbing. So there's nothing wrong with the uh, isolation in the transformer or the uh, cap there. It's doing fine. 
And of course, that's going to, uh, because it's the ground here, that's going to include the uh, sense terminal as well. So, uh, yeah, just some residual uh, capacitance. Very uh, similar to what you'd get in, like, you know, a little tingle that you feel in, uh, like, the RCA jack of a, a double insulated uh, audio like amplifier or something like that and, and very common it's just a bit of uh, capacitance nothing to worry about i already opened this one up because they didn't put mailbag on it anyway thank you very much to snaptron ah uh, you might know the name if you watch my keypad video and you should because it's a quite a good video on how to design your own keypad and uh they saw the video and they liked it and they said, hey, you know, we can't stand having you have all those old domes, my old uh, dome, Snaptron dome kit. Anyway, if you don't know, um, Snaptron are pretty much the world's, I think they are the world's number one in uh, tactile dome stuff. That's pretty much all they do. And so they um, couldn't stand that I had some old um, domes and they sent me a new kit. Oh, look, metal, oh, that's a nice card. That's a really nice card. Look, it's got the little tactile domes taped on there. Metal. Oh, it's pornographic. This is going to get demonetized. Well, check this out. This is about as specific a bit of test gear as you'll ever find. Um, this is done by Snaptron. It's called the uh, Sapphire, and it's a tactile dome displacement tester that actually, uh, its sole job is to test the tactile response of domes. And you saw this in the previous video. This might be a typical uh, tactile uh, response, as then it, you know, it snaps and does uh, the various force to push it down, and then the force to release it, and then the, you know, the trip pull and all that uh, sort of jazz. So, yeah, um, <laughs> that, I guess you can buy this if you're really serious about your tactile domes. Absolutely fantastic. They probably originally developed this in-house and then I would guess, oh, jeez, we could sell that. Yeah, why not? Um, apparently there is some standard F2592 for those playing along at home. Measures the trip force, return force, free height, uh, displacement, tactile activation slope and resistance. And you thought these little tactile domes would just go snap, snap, and that's it. No, you know, there's, there's a lot more art to it. Anyway, designed and made in the United States of America. There you go. And it can measure the uh, the resistance of the tactile dome, although that's going to depend because usually it's just the dome. So the resistance of it actually depends upon the contact, the surface, the material, and all sorts of other stuff that you're uh, using it from. But, oh, look at that. Pretty jazzy specs there. Very impressed. Like, I thought you'd do that, like, as a PC-based uh, thing, you know, rather than just, like, design all the user interface and all that sort of stuff. You'd just have the the box and the sensors coming out and they'd go into a little USB doodad or something. But anyway, I assume you can uh, output the data and things like that. That's jazzy. That's probably how they get uh, their responses for their data sheets. And this design guide here is actually really amazing. I hope this is available as a PDF. I'll check. If it is, I'll include it down below. Highly recommend you uh, check it out or contact uh, Snaptron if you want to get one. Um, but it goes into not only, you know, all sorts of specs and things, all the different uh, technologies, how to, uh, of course, how to order their part numbers and things like that, but all the characteristics. D dome stacking. There you go. I don't think I've ever seen that before, where you actually get a dome and you get, well, you stack one dome on top of the other. You sort of have to rotational offset, uh, of course, because they're usually uh, four liter like that. But then you can rotate them around and stack them, and apparently that can uh, increase the force the trip force without affecting life. So if you want a really stiff one, um, then you you always want a stiff one, then you have to like just stack them like that. Wow, didn't know about that. And tactile ratio, release force, trip force, force displacement curve, which is what we were uh, looking at before. And then they'll go into, the, there's all the various uh, force max, of course, pro motion stops when it actually uh, bottoms out and things like that. I don't know what that is. That looks impressive. Hmm. Anyway, these are the different metal dome types and PCB pads, uh, battery contact, domes, neat. Gold plated, nickel, gold or custom. And then all your methods of placing uh, your metal domes. We'll have a look at these uh, peel and place arrays in a minute. They actually uh, sent some of those. And automated uh, placement machine. They'll sell you all these automated uh, placement machines, vacuum uh, pens, pocket, pocketed reels and all sorts of stuff. Look at that. Look at that. 
Look at that bad boy. Wow, I'm sure they'll sell you one of those and uh, for a pretty penny. But if you're serious about this sort of stuff, if you're, you know, some manufacturing some fruity gadget or something, then uh, you're going to take this seriously and, you know, paying for serious bits of production kit like that is uh, is absolutely nothing. But anyway, absolutely fantastic place in Metal Dome. So here they can do all custom peel and place is what I'll show you in a sec. And yeah, we have some examples of those. But anyway, this design guide is absolutely fantastic. So hopefully I can uh, design in uh, uh, fixed apparatus and things like that, little jigs to do it. Absolutely brilliant. Recommended PCB patterns. You would uh, vary from these recommended uh, patterns at your uh, peril, I would suggest. Although they're not, they're fairly tolerant. Like you know, you don't have to be absolutely exact, but you wouldn't want to, you know, if you're using their particular dome, use their recommended uh, footprint. You really wouldn't dick around with anything else unless you had absolutely something very uh, specific. And here you go. Here's an example of these uh, peeled. Uh, you get them in a basic array like that, or you can get them custom. Uh, laser cut to your particular um, arrangement and uh, product uh, that you just stick, peel it off and then stick it on and then bingo, job done. There's a specific shape product there, another one, have little custom cutouts and all sorts of stuff. Really neat. And these are just uh, various types of uh, sample tactile domes that you saw in the uh, previous video as well. All different shapes and sizes. Look at those. Oh, now we're getting into some bad boys. Oh, let me have a feel. Oh, geez, that requires some force. Yes, yeah, 700 grams. Wow, this is 900. Oh, yep. <laughs> wow. But, hey, you know, you often have a need. So, this, you know, near, oh, 1,200. 1 1.2 kilos. I can't even get my finger in that. Is that even going to snap? Oh, that does snap. But that requires 1.2 kilos of trip force wow that's insane like I, like i can't do that with my finger really that's that's incredible i'm sure there's a niche use for that 900 is bad enough wow look at their life cycle testing machine wow test like 12 of these at once and just you leave it in the corner of the lab just going going at it all day wiggle 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 yeah fantastic <laughs> three to 12 cycles wow Three to twelve cycles per test per second. R crunch the numbers on that, and you know um, how long is it going to take to run your couple of million cycles? Oh man, that'd be so satisfying to use. You load all your domes into here, then just go plonk, 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 plonk. Oh, that'd be geez, you could do that all day. Your tactile dome aficionados are just going to get a stiffy over this. Pun intended. This is just like that's insane. Oh, that one's that one's only got like three edges three edges on it with a it's kind of chopped off it's a bit weird dual action oh they sent a little demo board and you can get ones with holes in the middle so that then you can put the uh cover over the top and then you can like just see your leads through there that is great i like that oh look at this this is going to get this video demonetized that's for sure oh look at that oh Thing of beauty, joy forever. Beautiful. Look at all these, uh, all the different. Oh, 85 grams. Geez, that's a light sucker. Six millimeters. Wow. There you go. I've got all the different types. What's over here? Four millimeters. Oh, that's super tiny. So if I was going to go back to my uh, micro watch, <laughs> you know, it's always on the cards. Might do it one day. But uh, yeah, little four millimeter tactile dome. That's incredible. 200 grams at four millimeters. Wow. And looks like I've got, oh, it's a, it's a little pointery thing. Oh, I've got various pads for different size domes and stuff. That's interesting. And that's, it's got a magnet in the end so I can pick up the domes and place them. Is that, is that the deal? Anyway, as a backup, I can use that, extend it out and pick up the trots. Look at the size of that bad boy. Oh, wow, that's hugely satisfying. It's not going to snap back because the surface isn't great and it's covered in the plastic, but oh, wow. Wish this was feel-a-vision. 
So thank you very much, Snaptron, for sending in this incredibly impressive kit. So I'm sure if you're uh, you know, a big enough customer, they'll probably um, send you these uh, sample kits if you're serious. And all the extra uh, design guide and stuff like that, I'll try and link that in down below. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm off to go sit in a corner and just have a fondle. No. That one. <laughs> Which one was your favourite? Um, the F147 00. F147 She's working from the EV Blog Lab today. Yes. Yes. Because. There's no electricity at home. <laughs> Oops. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tobias. Erdsland, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and hi to all my viewers in Switzerland. Um, this one sounds interesting. It's not a spoiler alert, I don't think. It contains two snowflakes. Too many bloody snowflakes in the world today, that's for sure. Uh, anyway, let's not go there. So, what sort of snowflake is it? Like, I've got, like, um, Christmas um, snowflakes. Oh, yes, I still have that snowflake thing from last time. There it is. Is it again? I don't know. It is. It's another snowflake decoration. <laughs> there you go. It, but it's not the same. I don't think it's the same. <laughs> Jeez, that's a fancy pantsy box. Made in the old dart. Why'd it come from Switzerland? It's made in the old dart. Hi Dave, there is no snow in Australia. Well, actually there is. <laughs> We're a very dry, barren continent. Uh, we have a couple of ski fields um, in Australia, in the Snowy Mountains uh, region, for example, and it does actually snow in the Blue Mountains up here, um, just outside, uh, just west of uh, Sydney. And eh, maybe once every couple of years, or once or twice every couple of years, uh, we'll get, you know, a, a little decent snowfall up there if we're lucky. So, although with uh, global warming, and uh, especially Australia just getting hotter, so I think we just had the two hottest years on record or something. But anyway, it did snow um, last winter up there. And when the conditions are right, oh, we've got a kit. Oh wow, okay. I see a quad flat pack. I see a... Why is it? Is that string? No, that's like steel cable or something. No, is it string or steel cable? Oh, anyway, look at that. Bare board. That looks pretty jazzy, doesn't it? Wow, look at that. From Euro Circuits is where the board's from. So why does it come from the old dart though? So I send you a snowflake winter decoration as small compensation. Oh, this decoration of none of this dull and boring lead blinking boards you find everywhere. Awesome. A non-linear PCM provides a wide dynamic range of brightness levels for each lead and there is communication between all boards to synchronize the played patterns. Oh, what? Uh, so you break them out because these are, uh, uh, these have got mouse bites on them. So you cut them out. So we've got five different snowflakes and they, they communicate. Oh, really? What? Via some sort of, you know, um, little Bluetoothy um, short range or some sort of, you know, uh, short range RF like an ant or something like that? Cool. It's one of his original snowflake kits, which is tough soldering challenge using 19 tiny 0402 LEDs. Why? Why do you have to use 0402 LEDs? And are they on? Yeah, they're on the other side. Okay, good. So circuitry on one side and uh, LEDs on the other side. No, why do you have to use 0402s? Vast amount of details on the project website, open source hardware and software. Thank you very much, Tobias, aka Lucky Resistor. What value is a Lucky Resistor? 555 ohms? Uh -huh. Turns out this looks like an older version because they have also supplied this one, which um, looks much up to date, a project by Lucky Resistor, luckyresistor.me, for those playing along at home, supported by microchips. So maybe they uh, provided some of the, uh, provided the micros or something, made in the UK by pimeroni.com. And there's a little USB power board there. It is all the open source GitHubsy type stuff. And ta-da, we have some assembled snowflakes, but... Wah, 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 wah. Here I was thinking that they communicate in terms of 
um, like wirelessly? No, they don't. It's they've got connectors on there for a reason, and they're all in a big string by the looks of it. Ah, oh, that's a bit of a bummer, but I don't know. What do you want? Mark II version, maybe? Hate these ribbon cables. They're real fiddly little bastards. These little tiny wire, like little four-way jobbies. Ah. Now, just a trap for young players here, I noticed. I've actually done a video on uh, doing panelization and adding uh, test support to your panel. In this particular case, like I've wired them all up. Let's say that you, know, you wanted to actually test these things on the panel. And of course, you've got your little um, USB board over here. Unfortunately, the connector doesn't go in because the, um, the US, it's not right on the edge like that. So, oh, just maybe you can bend it Anyway, but you can hopefully see where you could come a guts are there um, in terms of like just being able to test it. So anyway, oh, there we go. Oh, look. Oh, aren't they pretty? Oh, they're so pretty. Oh, look at it. Yeah, look at it cycle through. That's really quite good. Yeah, I like that. So this one's obviously the first in the string and then go across like that. That's really nice. Now, I must say, we've probably hit peak market saturation for LED snowflakes. Um, like, as in LED snowflake. We say LED here. Whatever. Anyway, LED snowflakes. Um, <laughs> the only market opportunity left, I think, is for, as I said, oh, look at that. Pretty pattern. As I said, uh, is the wireless thing where these, you know, you don't have to have these daggy little wires going between them. Sure, you know, you may not see these. It'd be better if these were, I don't know, black or something, uh, perhaps. You may not see those on your tree or whatever. You could just hide them away. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how long you can make this string, by the way. Anyway, um, whoa, hello, they're all gone. Oh, that might be my plug pack. Um, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't have a high enough load, it, uh, yeah, there we go doesn't have a high enough load, then it will <laughs> auto switch off. I guess these LEDs aren't high enough load for it. So anyway, yeah, I reckon um, like uh, wireless ones, each one's powered by like a little coin cell and you've got little um, micro uh, power RF uh, type thing and you can like synchronize them all together or something like that. That'd be very cool. And each one like has like maybe a little mini dip switch that you could like number each one uh, perhaps and yeah. Anyway, that's probably the only market segment left. Apart from that, I think it's saturated. Anyway, that's very cool. If you want one of these, I'll link it in down below. Obviously, um, I'm not going to be able to build up the uh, kit for this video, but maybe that will be a, uh, you know, a rainy day uh, kit build video. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's rather cool. I, uh, the effects on this are really quite nice. One of the best I've seen. Very impressive. Link down below. Hi to all my viewers in Melbourne and... Uh, Melbourne? It's nowhere near Germany. Hi to all my viewers in Germany, uh, especially Marius Schiff. Thank you very much from Deutschland. Uh, it's got no description. Oh, oh, vintage. There you go. Vintage. Oh, you know I like vintage. Vintage fanboy. If it's 80s, oh, even better. Nothing wrong with 70s, you know. Speaking of vintage, I... I just posted, and I post yesterday or something on Twitter. You've got to follow me on Twitter. That's where I post all the best stuff. Anyway, I posted an uh, image of the old Sony from the 1980s. The Sony, what is it? The, is it the APM? Um, the square speaker cones. Um, and, and uh, Yes, square flat speaker cones. They were all the rage back in the 80s. And uh, yeah, does, does anyone still use those? Anyway... Um, vintage. Wow. What channel? Oh, what? No way. That's it. No, that can't be a scope. Wow. No, no. What? This is the most bizarre looking thing I've ever seen. Look at this. Channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. What the heck is that? What? What do these things on the side do? This is hilarious. Obviously, I'm. Uh, oh, they're oh they they're selection switches. Oh, they're big thumb selection switches. Oh, and sliders. Oh, oh, that changes the mode and whatnot. Oh, wow, wow. Is this a portable scope? This has got to fold out, but I can, I don't want to break it. Apparently, I've taken the whole thing off. Oh well, Createc. Yeah. It's, it's a scope. 
Wow! That is the most bizarre scope I've ever seen in portable scope I've ever seen in my life. That is incredible. I wonder if it still works. The SC01. Wow. Look at all the buttons. That's very like late 80s, early 90s, perhaps. Unfortunately, the manual is in German. This model was produced in Germany around the early 90s. There you go, I called it. Uh, seems to be close identical to the Tektronix T201. I've never heard of the Tektronix T201. Wow, I'm going to have to put up a photo if I can find one. Um, thank you very much, Mario. He found it in the dumpster, and since I don't have any use for it, I want to donate to the mailbag. I played around with it uh, for some time. Seems to work perfectly. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh, thank you very much for sharing this. Mario, this is just an amazing portable scope. Wow. Even if it didn't work, just looking at hands, <laughs> hands up if you had one of these puppies. Oh, wow. And three channel. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, the channel one, channel two, an external trig. Beauty. Thank you very much, Mario. This is absolutely fascinating. I have never seen this before. The Createch? Createch? Um, yeah, sorry about the, the light and the glare on this thing. It's just, it's not, <laughs> it's not really conducive to studio lighting here. But anyway, um, it's a portable oscilloscope dating from the early 90s. And sure enough, uh, Tektronix, I checked, they did actually rebadge this as the uh, TS... Uh, the T201 and also the T202. Now the difference is the T202 has a more user-friendly, uh, more traditional style uh, interface, whereas this one is very calculator-like interface. In fact, <laughs> look at—I mean, if you didn't—if I didn't show you the top of this, you would go, "What? What the, is that? Some sort of weird-ass calculator? What is that?" But yeah, check this out. These buttons on the side. Do the slider like that. That's the volts per division for channel two. And then we've got off. So channel off, DC ground and AC and the same over here for channel one and external trigger as well. This would have been groundbreaking in the late 80s, early 90s. Absolutely no wonder Tektronix went, oh, geez, we couldn't. That'd take a long time for us to develop that. We'll just rebadge that. Uh, thank you very much. Tektronix, famous for making their all their own scopes uh, back then. And But this one, they went, oh no, this this German mob, wow, this is fantastic. We'll just rebadge that. Hands up if you had. Probably not. I know I do have a large contingent of uh, German viewers. It's like my fourth largest uh, contingent uh, worldwide or something. Lots of viewers in Germany. So hi to all my German viewers yet again. Oh, 1,976 serial number made in Germany. Oh, anyway, um, 6 megahertz uh, bandwidth, apparently. Max sample rate, 20 megahertz. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's getting a bit how you're doing at uh, uh, 6 meg, but... This would have been really handy. So leave it in the comments down below if you had one of these, or more likely the uh, Tektronix equivalent. How long did it last on the market? Was it, I don't know, was it usable? Was it, uh, when was it surpassed? When was the next like usable portable scope? Did the like, the, when was the Fluke scope meter released? I don't know, but hmm, wow. Interesting form factor though. Now yeah, we got some weird ass plug. Look at that puppy. Um, <laughs> power this thing up. It doesn't look like it. Uh, it's it's battery. Is it? I, I no. I think it did have batteries. Um, maybe it's rechargeable. I love this bit. The manual has an entire paragraph dedicated to the novelty of this semantic input system, asking the user to please take time to thoroughly learn how to type commands, as it will eventually feel completely natural and pay off in the long run. <laughs> I guess it was a dismal failure, um, which is why they developed it, the next version, the T202. Well, for Tektronix anyway, maybe all Tektronix customers complained and then they just re redesigned it for a more uh, user-friendly oscilloscope experience. It's actually a signal computer. Hence, I guess, the typing in the commands and things like that. So maybe they... Uh, you know, the original designers um, didn't, sorry, I can't read German, <laughs> but I'm sure all my German viewers can. Um, they, maybe, they actually um, you know, had a different 
usage scenario in mind for this thing. Um, that, I don't know, it'd be scripted and you can type commands into it and you can solve, you know, you can do integration or something on it and you could type in your formulas, but when people just want a portable scope, I guess. Um, so, it, yeah, let's see if we can power it up. It's a tad dangerous, don't try this at home. Um, I powered it up to 20 volts and, well, uh, I did see the screen flicker. But, uh, is that... Oh, oh, hey, there we go. Oh, we're in. Look. Yeah, sorry, this LCD is absolutely atrocious. Um, <laughs> not having much luck here at all. But anyway, I fed in a signal. And, oh, by the way, if you set both of these off, that actually turns the power off. So if you set one or the other on. Um, look, I assume that flashing light there is a trigger. Let me disconnect my input signal. No. No. Still triggering. So I'm feeding in a one megahertz sine wave. I'm getting nothing. So obviously it's not updating. Um, hmm. God, I've entered. I I just pressed the clear, clear all button, and it's just like switched off. Like what the? What? I don't get it. Now it's switched back on. Um. Oh, this thing is just. So two ninety nine point zero milliseconds per division. Ah, uh, where's the divisions? I, uh, <laughs> it's a graticule. This thing is just atrocious. I mean, what are you supposed to make of this? Like millimicro, nano, it's got calculator buttons. It's like H, min, uh, second, auto, auto. I'm going to press auto. No, it's beeping at me. Doesn't like auto. Oh, wow. Like, this is just ridiculous. Trigger. Trigger doesn't do anything. There's nothing on the screen, I swear. It just sounds like a frog. That's either a frog or a cricket, I'm not sure. And it can't fit on the screen properly either. Bloody mind screen. Maybe I shoot vertical video. I can go on TikTok. Announcing the EV blog TikTok channel. Jeez. Anyway, um, I, like... I, seriously, I've got no idea what I'm doing in the manuals in German. I don't know! This is the most retarded interface in history. If you know of anything worse, please leave it in the comments. Like, I, I can't get this thing to do anything. It's actually not entering any modes at all. On. We're DC. DC coupling. Auto. Just, it just frogs at me. This goes cricket, cricket, minutes, seconds, uh, equals volts. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> One on T. Well, there you go. It does actually work. Um, silly me had the, uh, the range switch to the wrong setting. And, oh, it's slow as all. Oh, look at that. It's a bit dodgy, brothers. There you go. But, uh, get, oh, the indenting on this is not nice at all. It's, oh, it's really, it's almost not indented. Um, this other side here feels a bit better. I think this has lost some of its uh, little plastic uh, indenty goodness. So, yeah, but it, 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 there you go. It works. But I can't, like, change the time base. Maybe if I press micro, like, I'm pressing micro, milli, all sorts of stuff, and I just can't get it to do anything. It's just, it's so stupid. Maybe this is where I've got to type in, oh, zero, the numbers that may, do I have to type in the commands or whatever? I, that's just dumb. No wonder they replaced this model quick smart. The world's worst oscilloscope. It has to be. <laughs> Please leave it in the comments down below if you know of anything worse than this. Oh my God, that user in there, sorry, you can't see this. I'm pretty sure you can't, I can't see the screen on the camcorder here, but it's better in real life, but um, maybe it's, uh, I don't know. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, oh, there's the LCD. Oh, I think, have I got a, yeah, I've got a polarizing filter on my left front. No, it's not a polarizing filter, but it's kind of working like one, isn't it? No, 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 there we go. Okay. Anyway, um, that is terrible, Muriel. Wow. That is absolutely shocking. Um, it, it probably deserves more than a two-minute teardown, so I'll definitely do that as a second video. This thing's mailbag is going to be long enough anyway. So, uh, yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to take this sucker apart. So thank you very much, Mario, for sending that in. That is absolutely brilliant. Hands up if you had one of these puppies. <laughs> probably not for long before you realised how frustrating it was. Oh.
Thank you very much, James Bowman from Pescadero in California. Anyway, hi to all my Californian viewers. Hope you can afford your uh, housing over there. <laughs> Shouldn't talk. I'm in Sydney. Anyway, my sub has dropped like 18 20 percent in the last year or so anyway um this is a specific bit of uh kit judging by the um, specific bit of test kit which is always interesting oh that's jazzy that's jazzy oh yeah see i was going to do something like this i was uh, probably i'm not going to say the exact project to this but probably pretty close to this i was going to do this Oh, 15 years ago now, probably. <laughs> anyway, I thought it'd be really cool. Because what... I haven't told you what it is yet. Anyway, I'll tell you the story is... um, I thought... Because uh, I was doing lots of um, I2C bus stuff back then. And, like, these days, like... Okay, uh, like uh, I squared C debugging in, you know, your cheap ass logic analyzer or built into your scope. No worries, right? But back then, it was, you know like not that easy or uh, cheap to do so I thought it'd be like real handy if you could just have a little board like this with a little display I think mine was going to use an LCD that basically just uh, plugged into um, the I squared C bus in a product in particular for uh, well, yeah god could have been tw was it 20 years ago now anyway um, I squared C um, is I squared C into IC communications developed by Philips for use in their TVs and other products. So I squared TVs are filled with various I squared C, uh, you know, like video type chips all hooked up together. And you could plug this onto the I squared C bus and you could like diagnose things and things like that. So, you know, I had that idea for a kit. Can't remember how far I got, but anyway, focus your bastard. There you go. Isn't that cute? It's a little board. Tiny little micro on its own daughter board, um, and a just a little um, a two separate two uh, segment uh, display um, to show the address and the data of your I squared C. Um, so I presume that's what it is. Not sure I squared C driver. Not sure what that is, but yeah, let's check it out. It's the I squared C driver. It's a small USB to I squared C interface with a nice visual display. Here's a cute I squared C gadget in there too. All right. Um, I squared um, I2C driver, one word, dot com. Uh, excellent domain name. And James is from uh, X Camera Labs. Guess he doesn't like cameras anymore, so he's from the X Camera Lab. Anyway, cool. Um, a little specific bit of kit. So I don't think that's. That I think this is just a display. I don't think this is an analyzer. It's just. So it's an I squared C driver. So it just allows you to um, the, convert your PC into I2C. Okay, so it's not what I, I thought it was going to be an I2C analyzer, but it's not. Anyway, maybe I should have developed my own. Um, is there a specific, like, you can get the bus pirate and stuff, uh, you know, these days. But anyway, um, yeah, that was my idea back in the day. Don't know why I never went through with it. It was one of my you know, dozens of unfinished project ideas. Oh wow, check it out. This is the actual uh, driver itself. And at first glance I went, oh wow, they've gone to the effort to get all the different colored silk screens printed on here. And if you don't know, you can actually do this. You can actually get multi-colored silk screens and the manufacturer will actually do a multi-pass process, uh, process for you. They have to actually, each color of course has to be separate. There is no like, oh, maybe if, maybe some, man hands up uh, in the comments down below if you know of a manufacturer that has a color dot matrix silk screen printer i haven't heard of one but anyway i've i've had this done before where you can you know any color that they uh can supply or even maybe they can get in like some custom colors for you if you pay enough money really and they'll do a separate silk screen uh pass for each one so uh, like however they do their uh, silk screen process silk screen in quote marks is not actually using a silk screen much anymore but you can actually get multi-colored silk screens and but it does actually cost you a lot more because there's not a standard process they've got to put through multiple times blah 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 anyway we have an lcd it turns out that they didn't do that it's just a sticker <laughs> it's just a decal but that's cool <laughs> no worries so x camera labs there you go you can scan that at home and that's rather neat i like that so we can plug in our uh, little uh, display here to our i squared c driver and then we can drive things and the good thing is it looks like it's a three channel here geez that's handy 
Anyway, this is from James. Thank you very much. And a friend, uh, avid mailbag viewers, and he's included a screenshot here. There you go. So that's the uh, little software that uh, comes with it. And it'd be nice if it was like if you plugged it in, it was like a web address or something like that, perhaps. So you wouldn't need software. And there's the little display, electricdollarstore.com. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love how they've got like just the little separate boards there for each one. That's cute. And we turned it on. The first thing is it is actually quite dim, the uh, screen. But anyway, I like it. It actually measures the current and the voltage. That's actually very nice. I like that. Anyway, um, yeah, we do have no data, no address there. It's a shame they don't actually have labels on there. Wait, you're probably screaming at me, Dave. There's data on that screen. Turns out that there is. If you tilt it like this, I can just barely read it. I can barely read If you put it straight on, it absolutely... That's not the camera. That, that's not the light. I cannot read that. Um, it's, it's barely there. That's just... No. No, 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 no. No, that screen. That screen needs to go. Got to fix that. Got it plugged in here, and it's talking to it. It's just uh, appears as a comp corp port. There's no drive or anything. They got a Windows download. I think they got Linux uh, ones as well. Oh, uh, no, I can see. Okay, data's appearing. Okay, I've got some... Yep, I've got some data. Oh, ah, I haven't got a long enough cable. Now, I did manage to get some data to come up, uh, like a waveform to come up, but that's only because I plugged it out of one port and plugged it into a, another. And really, um, I'm not having any luck here at all. I've got monitor, there we go, monitor mode. And uh, yeah, really don't like the um, contrast. These do come up different colours here. I did get a couple of digits to come up blue, but... Uh, Anyway, I squared C reset, monitor mode, which monitors it all. And uh, cool, you can actually um, choose your different uh, pull-ups, which is fantastic. I really like that. And you can choose your speed, 100 or 400 kilohertz. Oh, that megahertz rubbish. And uh, capture mode here just uh, has a like an I squared C uh, thing. Um, but I can't write any data. like. So there you go, it is in live monitor mode now. It's running for 20 seconds. If I disable that, current drops to zero. So it's it's talking to it. It's all live. But uh, I'm not sure what the deal... Then it, it actually just popped up there for a second with not responding. Oh, you saw it. That, that 26 just popped up there. Whoa, there we go. There we go, yep. And the corresponding ones on here alive so i don't know why oh, seems to be all over the shop I, I i don't know what's wrong is it me is it my computer i don't know bloody usb crap okay i finally looks like i finally got it as i said like a couple of these have shown up uh the it's mimicking on the display exactly what we're seeing here so i can choose this address aha uh -huh, and i can write can i write a one to it I don't know what I'm writing. Write a 1 to 15, uh, write an 11. That'll do. Um, oh, look. Oh, we got data on the screen. This is cool. There you go. That's the data that, I'm, uh, that I've sent, presumably. There you go. So let me, uh, let me try and send some other live data here. Let me send 2-2. Two, two. Yep, there it is. It's popped up. That's pretty cool. Shame you can't see that on the... Uh, you have to look at that on the LCD. Why can't you see that on the computer? It's a bit of a shame. Still getting nothing on there. So I'm not sure what I'm writing to. I'd have to, I guess, know that... I, I don't think they supplied any info for whatever uh, driver chip they've got on there. But um, So that's pretty jazzy. I like the, how that line shows up like a 48. And it, there's like it's basically an arrow going down. That's, that's really pretty cool. Okay. I found it's a little bit finicky. So, FF, we're, we're reading FF. Oh, see, now it's, yeah. Now it's just, well, yeah, it's just gone. It just vanishes for a bit. So I'm not sure if that that's supposed to... So can we choose a different register or something? There you go, FFFF. I don't know what I'm write, reading or writing. Like, that's, <laughs> that's the problem. I got no idea. So anyway, that seems kind of cool that's well worth a look that is uh open source hardware so check it out so you could actually make your own if you really wanted to 
Um, you know, it's crowd supply and all sorts of things. Seed Studio, cool components. Everyone, Artifruit. Can you buy it from Artifruit? I don't know. Anyway, I'll link it down below. Design, tested, and assembled in the United States of America. Thank you very much, Greg Latotcha in Portland. Not Portland, Oregon. Portland, Texas. I didn't know there was a Portland in Texas, but there you go. Go figure. Anyway, thank you very much. What are we... Oh, okay. Is this like a broken bit of kit? What is this? It's a Siemens safety output car from a popular industrial uh, S7 300 series. Oh yeah, not well. I was thinking it would be interesting to see how complicated simple 24 volt output can be and how it can be killed with uh, rat pee. Can be killed with rat pee. Okay, you will see inside. Oh, great. Let's look at some rat pee. <laughs> That's a first on the mailbag. Beauty. And there you have it. We have seen uh, these industrial uh, controllers before and they are very nicely engineered and built. They're absolutely fantastic. You can just tell the quality of the fiberglass uh, used in this thing. The, uh, you know, the PCB material is just not some cheapy. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, it's a Siemens for those playing along at home. And uh, we've seen these before where they don't have any screws holding them together. They're absolutely fantastic. So, so dip switches on the front, absolutely fantastic. Set the address there. So I gotta try and prize this out Somehow it'll come out eventually. Yeah, that just slid out. No wackers. Um, of course, we're gonna have custom, uh, you know, whatever custom processes up here. Custom uh, thingamabobs. Are they, you know, CPLDs, FPGAs? Got no idea. Um, so, yeah, nothing much to write home to your mum about here. Uh, here's all the uh, IO uh, stuff, whatever this thing's doing. I've got no idea. Anyway, got some LEDs down the bottom. Nothing too fancy, and you'll notice, no, well, there is solder missing from there, but it's missing on purpose, of course, because these big spade connectors down here are a press fit connector. So this whole thing just comes apart like this. I don't see the, uh, don't see the, ra oh, okay, that might be it down there. Is that the rat pee that's caused the problem? That... That could be the issue. A little bit of rat pee down there. No oh, wackers. What do we got here? Well, upside down, all the electrons are going to fall out. Can't see that part number from here. And uh, big ass diodes there, I presume they are. And it's fused for our protection. But yeah, nothing much. I expected something drastic. Um, like expected like a dead rat inside or something. But nope. It just I don't know if that caused the failure or not, but yeah, it could because then you get leakage across your board and yeah, you can come a gutser and it's probably got all sorts of internal uh, testing and all that sort of jazz. So yeah, this board here, absolutely identical. So they're near on two identical boards there. But yeah, um, I guess it only takes a small amount of damage like that to uh, cause this thing to come a gutser and be dumped. So, yep. I mean, uh, it's not uncommon here in Australia. We'll get, like, snakes inside power supplies and things like that. Like, there's famous, like, photos of snakes that are hidden inside uh, power supplies. Yeah, because these types of animals, they love, like, the little warm electronics uh, and the little spaces like this. So they love getting inside and uh, having a whiz, apparently. So, I uh, expected more than that. But anyway, thanks for sending that in. That's neat. And... <laughs> Look at all the effort they went to for that dip switch. <laughs> That's fantastic. But don't you love how, like, none of this... Oh, little tiny little pull-up resistor array down there. Well, you know, look, they went to all the effort to do that double-sided load, right? Just for that one little board. But um, they really do not like using screws in these industrial uh, DIN-type designs. It's like they really go out of their way. To avoid them, which is absolutely fantastic. And it's like all these uh, ones are all superbly designed and built. Haven't seen a crap one yet. Absolutely amazing. So thanks for sending that one in. Anyway, that's it for today's mailbag. So if you like the video, please give it a big a thumbs up. There was another package that I opened, but because this is like 
50 minutes long already. I'm going to uh, leave that for a separate dedicated video. So hopefully that'll come soon. So as always, uh, check out my library channel over there. 13,000 and something subscribers now. Oh, number five in the world. Oh, can you keep up? It's going gangbusters. Um, crypto just crashed today. So library credits, really cheap. Cheap as. Unbelievable. Anyway, catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.